Inferno. Now he comes towards oh, the last. Shane Breen, Canyon McCann. Gets hey. his first clear round. Only the 65th in history. But he's got a jump. It's pretty close. He's done it. Oh, it's close. Oh, look at that. Two hundreds. Oh, my word. That's what it comes down to after all the drama of the afternoon. The first win for Trevor Reed for Ireland. Jane Green, Jack Ryan, David Simpson, Trevor Breen. Victorious in Abu Dhabi. A Gwini Ushla, Falterovis Jock, is more an Ohasurum, Vet and Vor Lawher, or an Ocod Special to Show, a Koshal Namoon. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. Are in the world, we welcome you here this evening. Welcome to Brew Brew in Cashel. <laughs> hey! <laughs> we're, we're in the shadow of the world famous rock of Cashel here tonight, and it's going to be a great night celebrating these two fellas in front of us. Uh, but first, we invite the Cahirluk of Corley Kunde Tiberdor and Roger Kennedy to open proceedings. Roger, a great night ahead. Brilliant night ahead. You're all very welcome here to Brubaru. Uh, tonight, we're, Tipperary County Council are giving a civic reception to Trevor and Shane Breen uh, to mark their achievements over a long period in winning so many fantastic competitions and for their promotion of uh, show jumping for their promotion of the equestrian uh, industry in Ireland and for their participation on behalf of Ireland. And they have always competed on behalf of Ireland in all the show jumping that they have done around the world. Uh, it's a fantastic night here with a tremendous crowd in. A civic reception is the highest honour that Tipperary County Council can bestow on anybody. Uh, it makes them special citizens of the county. And... Generally, there's one or two per year given. This is my second one this year. The first one was the minor hurlers that won the All-Ireland uh, last July. And it's not given lightly. And I had to come before a full meeting of the council and propose that Shane and Trevor would be honoured with the civic reception. And I'm glad to have got the full backing of the members of Tipperary County Council. Many of the councillors are here with you tonight. And thanks very much, lads. But I think these boys deserve this honour. And it's great to be giving it to them. Very good, Roger. And we have... You have some special gifts and a scroll to give to the boys later on, which we will return to you on. But for the moment, we welcome two brothers, two Cashel natives, two Tipperary men. Shane and Trevor, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having us. It's a pleasure. It's good to be here. You were only brought up out the road. You're back home. It's, it's a sort of homecoming, as you two might say. Um, yeah, it is. Um you know, Cashel is my home for basically my whole life. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's always a pleasure to come back. I love it here. Some, some of my best friends are here. Um, and my home is just a mile out the road in the Dweller Road. So uh, it's always a pleasure. I love coming back. I don't get here often enough now. But, uh, yeah, I always look forward to it and always love it. And you were telling me earlier on, it's not your first time in the Brew Brew Theatre either. Your last time you were saying you were in here not so long ago. Yeah, well, it is a while ago, but uh, I brought my wife, Caroline, to see The Unbelievables here. <laughs> uh, How did she, that go? She, could, she didn't understand the word. <laughs> I, I had a tonight. good night, though. <laughs> and you've been busy at the weekend, guys. Um, Trevor, you were in action over the last few days. Uh, yeah, I was in Cannes, uh, Cannes, then the south of France at the weekend on a Global Champions Tour show. Um, uh, so, yeah, went okay. I'd won down the Grand Prix, but a bit unlucky. Uh, but I was fourth in the, the other big class, and uh, I think we were fourth in the team event as well. Uh, so, okay weekend. Could have been better. But you win some, you lose some. 
It's a hair's breadth in, the, in our game, unfortunately. As we saw earlier on in our introduction, and we look forward to returning to that particular story. You were busy at the weekend too, Shane. Yeah, I was in France in La Boule. And um, yeah, like a lot of shows, a bit of a roller coaster up and down. We had a good win in the derby, which was great. Um, it's a bit like a lot of the derbies for me. I've been second, I think, in all of them. So I'm kind of just going around again, trying to win them now. <laughs> you, you have the inside track now at this stage. Yeah, I have a couple of more years, a few more to get, but we'll keep going. Very good. And uh, we're going to be talking about your careers today and your hopes, dreams and aspirations for the future. And I suppose horses was always in the family. I was talking to your dad, John, who we'll see in a few minutes from Glen Ban in Latin in West Tipperary. Proud of his own horse heritage too, Shane. Yeah, so like my, my memories going back was my grandfather. He brought me on a pony and cart one day, and I thought it was the best crack ever. And, and then my Uncle James and Dad were very, very much involved in the horses and hunting and everything, and that's where my passion for the hunting came. And then the show jumping, uh, Mum and Dad brought us to the RDS one year. I think I was eight or nine years old. And on the Friday, and I was sat in the stand and watched the Aga Khan, and I watched Eddie Mackin jump a clear around and the roar of the crowd, and I thought, you know what, I want to do that. <laughs> And finally, when I got the chance to go in and jump a double clear on the Aga Khan, I remember looking up to where I sat that day. The only problem was World Cruise spun around there and threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to enjoy the moment too long. But I think as a kid, you get those, you get like an idea. And then, you know, I was lucky enough, um, my, my parents and my family, extended family, uncles, everybody, cousins, because of them, they gave me the chance to live my dream. Well, 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 we're going to go back to the start. We're going to hear from your dad in a few moments. But first, we're going to hear from some local representatives also proud of your achievements. We have a proud tradition in this county council of ours of Tipperary in honouring people who have achieved greatness in their given sports in particular and in their particular lives. In the past, we have honoured uh, our hurlers, our footballers. Uh, we have a proud t tradition of racing, of horse racing, and indeed of show jumping in, in our county. I think tonight, especially of Vincent and Aidan O'Brien of Bally Doyle, who have brought greatness to this county. I think of Mouse Morris, who has also uh, achieved greatness, and indeed Rachel Blackmore. Tonight, we turn our attention to show jumping. The Breen brothers, Trevor and Shane, the first time that we have two brothers to honour. The Breen brothers have excelled not only here in Ireland or in Europe, but all over the world and are still doing so. And they make us extremely proud that they follow in the footsteps of the likes of Dennis Lynch, of Tipperary Town, of Greg Broderick of, of Turles, of Max Watchhorn, a grandson of the great John Magnor, Kevin Babington of Carrick and Shure. I want to pay a special tribute this evening to Trevor and Shane and to wish them every success. Uh, they have brought great honour to this county. I know the Breen family from indeed all over West Tipperary. I know their dad. I, I know that he is extremely proud of his two sons as their late mum Mary would have been as well. So tonight I say to Trevor and Shane, all the very, very best for the future. We are delighted here in Tipperary to be associated and to accord you this civic reception. You are well deserving of this accolade for your achievements. Keep up the great work throughout the world. Thank you very much for what you do. On behalf of the Labour Party, I want to congratulate Trevor and Shane Breen on their success. Nobody realised the hours or the hard work that goes into all of these and to get them on that top stage. And I suppose really only the two boys and their families know the hours and the work, the commitment. No matter what type of sport you're involved in or what you win, it does take a lot of time. It takes a lot of commitment. It takes courage. And really, it's both the work-life balance between the family hours that you miss out on as well. But lads, look, it's a great achievement for the Trevor and Shane and just continued success to them both. My dad was a farmer, like, and he had horses and that. And then my brother James was also in horses, and he did a lot of hunting and that. So any time I was back home and that, there was always a few horses to be ridden, which I was glad to do. 
a friend of mine had a horse for sale and I called out to see the horse, but the horse didn't suit. So he had a load of ponies anyway, and he said, you buy a few of the ponies. So I bought a few of them anyway, and uh, the lads called him Snap, Crackle and Pop. And uh, that was the first pony, if you like, that Shane had. Then we got another pony then. Rowena was into the red, Rowena, my daughter. She was interested also, and we got a pony called Snowflake for her from Pat Cash. And uh, he turned out to be a super pony. Trevor was also interested in all sport. It wasn't just the ponies and that. But Shane and himself, they always got on extremely well. And they were always very pally. They could never compete in the same age category because Shane was four years older than Trevor. When Trevor was in the 12 2 ponies, I think he won 19 competitions that year. And Shane was in the 14 twos that year, and he won 26. From my point of view, or Mary's point of view, look, as far as we were concerned, they were happy and they were doing well. Unfortunately, uh, if I may say so, Mary passed away. She was a fantastic person. She was a great mother and, and um, a lovely, lovely person and a fantastic wife and very supportive. And I must mention their wives too. They're married to two fantastic ladies, you know, Chloe and Caroline. And they're very welcoming from my point of view. And they're very good and very supportive of the lads. As is my daughter, Rowena, who's, ma who's married now in County Loud to Ed. And I must say, they all get on extremely well, which gives me great satisfaction as a granddad. <laughs> Thanks to the Tipperary County Council for even considering us and agreeing to do it. And thanks to Roger Kennedy for making it happen, shall we say. And because, um, you know, I've been living in Tipperary all my life, more or less. And uh, I'm delighted to see that my local county council are supporting the lads in that way. Well said, well said indeed, John. Um, Trevor, before we um, move back to the brother, it's great to see your wives and fa extended family here tonight. I met Carolyn and Chloe earlier on, and I'm sure they're key to Team Breen. Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's like everything. Um, you know, we're, we're the two in the saddle getting the plaudits or whatever, but uh, like everything, it takes, a, it takes an army to, to, make a, to make a success. Um, and, you know, Caroline to me, and I'm sure Chloe, uh, Shane would say Chloe to him, are, are hugely important in that. Um, you know, they give us the full backing. Uh, you know, there's times as kids, there's a whole other yard of horses at home, and, you know, uh, often that's I don't all. feel like mucking out today. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, they keep the show on the road in that regard, and, um, you know, just take all that off our minds when we're trying to focus on, on, on the horses and... And then riding the horses while we're while we're away, keeping them fit. So when I do come back from those shows, that I can just get straight on the other horses and crack on with them, and they're ready to go. Um, and 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 Caroline jumps the others as well while I'm not there. So it's it's they're huge. Uh, God, it's the dream woman you have there. Well, <laughs> I suppose I've said it out loud now, haven't I? <laughs> I'm sure you're not that competitive, Shane, the two of you, but you're under pressure now to make a good statement about your own other half. <laughs> I just sit back and let Chloe do all the logistics. <laughs> so basically, yeah, it's, you know, without, without Chloe and, and family, uh, none, none of this is possible, you know. And, um, you know, as Trevor said, we, we get the chance to go in the ring and, and hear the applaud and... and to, to, to be here tonight, which is amazing for like Tipperary Council to consider us and, and Roger Kennedy, it's such an honor for us. And, and you know, Chloe said it to me and, uh, you know, we were just trying to get our heads around it. And, and then I, I was at a show and in Wisbaden the week before last and uh, John Magner came over to congratulate me. And it was only when he spoke to me it really sunk home what this meant. And I, I said it to Chloe, and you know, it's not about me or Trevor tonight, it is about Chloe. It's about the kids, it's because without them, even when we come home with a bad show and we're in a bad mood and whatever, you know, Chloe says to me, you snap out of it. 
the kids, the kids have had a bad day too, maybe, and they're not whining like you. So, <coughs> you know. Wait till I tell you the homework scores. <laughs> <laughs> Do your homework better and go out again and improve. But um, yeah, listen, without, without, without Chloe and like Caroline is fantastic and we're neighbours. Um, so it's, you know, Hickstead is home from home. Douglas Bunn, before he passed away, he said it's like Mixstead here now. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us about Snap, Crackle and Pop. Um, Crackle was a lovely one. Pop was a nutter. And I d the other one didn't uh, stick around too long. Um, but, uh, yeah. They, they so were three ponies for the three kids. Yeah, I had Crackle. She was quite sweet. Um, and, they, yeah, they were, they were, listen, they were the first step on the ladder, weren't they? Mm. And um, I, I remember, actually, Dad took me hunting with Crackle. I had, the, I had the option of taking another pony that Rowena had that he spoke about, Snowflake, or Crackle. But because I had broken in Crackle with my father, I thought I'd take her. And I fell off her seven times. No way. <laughs> uh, the most embarrassing fall was when I had cow shit all up my leg. <laughs> but we soldiered on, but I rode Snowflake the next day. <laughs> This sounds like a Rocky movie. It's not about the hits. It's how many times you get back up. Yeah, exactly. Well, look, um, we're, we're going to divide up the story of the Breens into Trevor's half and Shane's half before we look at some of your great achievements. So we're going to look at your journey to today first, Shane, and also get some further remarks from local representatives. Tonight for both Shane and, and Trevor um, receiving the civic reception on behalf of um, Tipperary County Council. Uh, I'm delighted uh, that we here in, 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 the, in the council are going to honour both, both men for their achievements in the various arenas around the world representing Ireland and to wish them well into the future on behalf of myself and the Workers' and Applied Action Group for the, the amount of effort they've put into the show jumping uh, arenas throughout the, the world and for their future endeavours, uh, especially in the Olympics coming up. We wish them well. Thanks. On behalf of the independent group, I would like to congratulate Shane and Trevor on their outstanding success and commitment to show jumping. Um, it's amazing that two brothers uh, from Tipperary both share a passion for horses and for, for the sport of show jumping and have managed to make such an indelible mark on the international scene. As a young fella, uh, from Holy Cross, I remember in my youth, the, the Jim Canna, and it brings back fond memories. And I suppose, you know, it's incredible for uh, someone to have that passion and to be able to actually forge a career, um, and such an impressive career. And as I say, to have two brothers who can do it simultaneously is, it's just, it's, it's an incredible achievement. Everybody in Tipperary is incredibly proud of the success the brothers have shared, and they represent Tipperary with you know, a great distinction internationally, and I don't think that can be underestimated. They may not be living in Tip anymore, but we'll, you know, they'll forever be Tipperary men. Uh, we'll forever be very proud of them, and I just want to wish both of them continued success into the future, and hopefully there's uh, many more great achievements lay ahead for both. Shane didn't want to do anything else, really, on a ride. He loved ponies and, and that. And in fact, one day his mum had sat him down to teach him a bit of Irish. And he said, Mum, he says, what I'll be doing in life, Irish will be no good to me. And so it proved to be the case. Tommy Wade, Tommy is now deceased and he was a great help to Shane. Tommy Wade and Dundrum were possibly the best known sports people in Ireland in their day. They won everything that could be won all over the world. Tommy Wade would, would return down blank checks for Dundrum. He was his horse and he jumped him. He won in Germany. He won. he won everything that could be won in the world. He was on the very first civilian team that won the, the Aga Khan in Dublin. Tommy Wade was unique. He had a unique gift. He would know what was possible and what's not possible. And he'd know, you know, the different tactics to adapt, say, jumping around, whether to go fast or go slower. For instance, one thing I remember him saying was that in racing, when you're coming to a fence, you, you um, drive on, so to speak, faster, faster. But in show jumping, you, you shorten. In racing, you lengthen, but in show jumping, you shorten. Because if you lengthen in show jumping, you'll have a pull down. And then 
you won't be right for the next spins because you'll be going too fast. So you have to shorten and keep balance. Balance is very important, as I understand it. It was like being brought up beside Christy Ring. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't put it any closer than that. And having, having a retired Christy Ring as your hurling advisor. And he took young uh, Shane under his uh, wing. And uh, he had a willing pupil because that's all Shane wanted to do. And of course, Tommy Wade's son now is Alan Wade, and he's the, he is the leading sh show jumping builder in the world. Builds all, he, he spends this time of the year now, from now until November, he will be in America and such places. I uh, am very proud of my father. Unbelievable. Um, I still miss him. Shane, as a young boy, was riding ponies and very successful in riding ponies. My father used to be giving health and advice at shows and pony jumping and trying to win classes and explain to Shane what to do, what he had to do to win classes. And then afterwards, then when they got into horses, we used to always have young horses and so we'd send them into Shane. And then Trevor later on, then Trevor used to be helping them. They used to be working together. And so there was no better place to send them. And it was straight in, in the road and they were always good riders. Then Shane, when he, was, when, when he was young, he used to come out and ride some of the race horses when we'd be galloping race horses. My father used to train a lot of pointer pointers and that. And, uh, he used to come out and, and, and ride them as well, so it was, it was the, the relationship built up over that. Well, we're delighted to say that in the audience here tonight is Tommy Wade's sister, Biddy. You're very welcome, Biddy. <laughs> now Biddy Perdue, of course, and also uh, Alan Wade's wife, Anne-Marie, who makes lovely tea and cake, and thanks for it there during the week, Anne-Marie. So we're glad to have you. <laughs> Alan is in Kentucky, the folks were telling me <clears throat> earlier on, so the Wade name still at a global level in show jumping. And Shane, would it be fair to say that the bright lights of academia never really attracted you? Um, <laughs> it was, when I think back of starting off with the race horses and with Tommy, he was an out and out. It was win at all costs. It was, you never thought about the opposition. You didn't think about anything. You just thought about trying to win. And one of the best uh, stories I remember, uh, we had won Dublin and then Navin was the, was the kind of the big final for the ponies. And uh, Tommy came up specially for the final. And we were in the jump off. I remember they had a bucky in front of the stand, like in the rider stand. And there was, uh, may rest in peace, Paul Dara. And there was um, Eddie Macken. And a lot of the top riders were there waiting for their competition. It was rare that they were all home. And Tommy, he was obviously chef to keep to them. And um, Tommy said, this young lad's going to win. And they were like, well, who's this young fella? <laughs> <coughs> so then uh, I got around the first round, it was fine. So we're coming down the chute, and Tommy grabbed my leg, and he said, the only way you can win this is when you jump that skinny gate, you turn inside that oxer. And when you turn, you kick. And when you kick, kick again, and gallop over the last. And I was like, but well, he won't jump it. Believe he'll jump it, and he'll <laughs> jump it. So anyway, I was like, right, right, right. I was afraid to say no. So <laughs> he, he, all the lads were in the stand, I'll never forget it, and they were obviously listening to this, and I could hear a bit of sniggering going on. So then I went in, flew around, I was lucky enough it came off, and I'm coming out of the ring, and there's only one left to go, and Tommy's shouting up at the lads, now, I told you. I told you so, none of you believed me. And they said, oh, you haven't won yet, there's one more to go. Forget about it, lads. So Tommy just turned around, never said anything to me, and walked over to the bucky. Stood at the bucky until the last one jumped. And then I was walking around in the warm-up, waiting for him to come out and sing my praises. And he didn't. He jumped oh. in the car and went home. <laughs> so, so then I went out riding the racehorse, and I said, what do you think of that? He said, what do you mean, what do I think of that? You believed you'd win it, and you won it. Good. Well. And that was it. And I thought, well. And then... You know, I used to What's the lesson and the moral of the story, Shane? 
<clears throat> the moral of the story, I think, for any young person is believe in yourself. Mm. And whatever you set your mind to, believe you can do it. You might have an odd setback here or there, but you got to believe in yourself. Mm. you got to believe in your animal or your tools or whatever you have and, and, and just go for it. And can I ask you, was jockeying, say, a national hunt or flat, was that ever considered by you or was it always show jumping? Um, it was, it was, and, and um, I remember going out in the mornings and, and Alan didn't ride so much. He was, even back then, he was kind of more interested in, in the course designing and watching courses and that, and he said to me, why are you bothering with this? And I said, sure, you got to do everything, you got to try everything. And then um, uh, Dad said, you should make a decision because I had some jumpers in and and that was when uh, I said to Tommy, what do you think? And he said, you got to make up your own mind. He said, you have a chance in it, but it's, you're, you're looking at it false because here you're very safe. But when you go out in the real world, you're going to get a rude awakening. So we made a decision that night and I went for the show jumping. And, and the rest, as they say. The rest is history, yeah. So Trevor, with all this going on then, and you were coming down after the brother, um, age-wise and everything else. Are you thinking, because you, you kind of had a, a few kind of thoughts really before focusing on show jumping really, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I, I was probably a late, uh, late comer really. Uh, I obviously I rode the whole time with, with dad and, and, and Shane and Rena um, in ponies and, and all that. But then um, I suppose when you... I, I probably, I went, you know, Shane wouldn't go to school, basically. Um, and uh, I, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> I, I, there used to just be fights every morning trying to get him to go to school. Um, whereas you, on the other hand, were a model pupil. I was a model pupil, yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I, I did that. But like I think uh, you mentioned there, I was, I was just into all sport, really. Um, and uh, so I played everything, really, that you can think of. And... Um, yeah, I had a bit of a roundabout uh, way to it, and uh, it ended up after college. I did a commerce degree in UCC, and then uh, worked for uh, insurance company for a year in Cork, and then a year in Merle Lynch in Dublin. Uh, absolutely hated that. That was like torture. Um, so I decided I had to go another route. So I I I'd kind of tossed around secondary teaching for a bit. Um, so as we will soon discover. Yeah. Um, so I went back for that. Um, because I thought in my head I could uh, base, I was playing a lot of rugby at the time and uh, so I thought, uh, you know, work in a rugby school in Rockwell, teach, have a steady income, be kind of play rugby and coach in the winter and then be a show jumper for three months of the summer. So in my head it was perfectly mapped out and, uh, and I did that for I think three years but just the show jumping just started to take over and um, yeah, at the end, that, that, I think it was September 08 when... Um, I just I didn't go back to school basically in that mm -hmm. September. I ended up, uh, so I suppose you could probably call me professional from then, really. Well, well, well. I'm glad to say we caught up with some of the Lachicos that were happy to appear on camera that you encountered during this phase of your life, and we also have some further remarks from members of Tipperary County Council. On behalf of the Fianna Fáil Group, I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate Trevor and Shane Breen on their phenomenal show jumping successes to date. In according this reception, the highest honour that Tipperary County Council can bestow on any individual or individuals, we, the members of Tipperary County Council, are recognising those achievements on behalf of the people of Tipperary. Between you, Trevor and Shane, you have represented your country and your county at national, European and world championships, including the Olympics and many Grand Prix. Outside of the show jumping arena, Trevor and Shane, of course, alongside their equally matched show jumping fanatic enthusiastic wives, Caroline and Chloe, also enjoy very successful equine businesses. Trevor and Caroline running Breen Sports Horses in Glenar Farm in Sussex, and Shane and Chloe running Breen Equestrian in Hickstead in Sussex. Between both businesses, they produce, train, and sell top quality horses 
in addition to training riders amongst many other business interests. Trevor and Shane, through your respective and impressive show jumping achievements, you have helped to keep Tipperary and Ireland front and centre on all major national, European and world stages. And in so doing, you have done your family, your town of Cashel, your county and your country proud. And on behalf of the Fianna Fáil party, we wish you both continued success for the future. I want to offer my full support to this motion and my utmost congratulations to Shane and Trevor on their wonderful achievement in getting this civic reception tonight. They're ambassadors to the equine in industry all over the world and they're flying the flag for Ireland. Um, but we also have immense pride in that they're flying the flag for Tipperary and for the equine sport and the horsemanship that we produce in Tipperary. It's a marvellous achievement to do anything on an individual basis, but to do it with your sibling must be extra special for the brothers. If we can only achieve half what they have achieved, I think everyone would be ecstatic with their life's work. They're carrying on an amazing tradition of horsemanship in Tipperary. I can remember watching the Aga Khan Cup and being fascinated by how high the horses could jump and uh, the skill and the horsemanship that th those riders produce. It's wonderful to look at them, and, but it's also wonderful to know that this has been represented across the world and that we're showing off the best of Tipperary when the lads are doing that. On my own behalf, on behalf of my party, Sinn Féin, we want to give the utmost congratulations to Trevor and Shane on this wonderful achievement. Well, I'm Dermot Prezan. I'm currently the Deputy Principal in St. Joe's CBS in Nina, and I formerly worked in Rockwell College. Um, it was at that point that I first came across Trevor. He um, arrived into the school in 2005 looking for some work as a, a teacher, I suppose, as he was interested in becoming a teacher, and he wanted to gain some experience as he was hoping to pursue a teaching career. Philip Ryan is my name. I'm from Ballina Hinch, uh, just outside Cashel there, dairy farming. And my connection with the Breens would be I was in Rockwell College and Trev would have been, I think, two if not three years ahead of me. But um, where we really became friends was in Cashel Rugby Club. We were both coaching rugby teams in Rockwell. He had the 14s, I had the 16s. And we used to share buses and our away fixtures. We just got chatting and I suppose we had three common things. He was into rugby, so was I. He was into show jumping, so was I, obviously, on a lesser extent. And we both had a pathway in education. To be fair to him, he, he was a really good teacher. Um, you know, he took the lads, he took them, he was good with the pupils, he had a good way, they responded well to him. And, and, and that year when he was uh, doing his diploma, that was pretty full on. It was a full-time education course. He was also playing rugby. He was coaching the lads in school in a rugby team, the Junior Cup that year. And he was show jumping full-time. You know, at the highest level in Ireland, he was jumping Grand Prix at weekend. So to balance all that, you know, you need a good work ethic and a good approach. And to be fair, while it kills me to say it, he was actually good at it. Cashel was a kind of real social club and, you know, would be known to be a social club. And they weren't, there was no real emphasis on getting pushing it on until Derry O'Connor came in as president and got us to stop drinking on a Saturday night, yeah. win on Sunday and have a few, good few pints. So that, that changed a lot for us. Like we won Division 3, Trev would have been out half. We won a junior plate, which was the start of it, a Munster Cup, I think. You know, it was our first Munster one, but it was still a plate. And then we won him. Um, the first big one that always sticks out in anyone's head is uh, we won the Challenge Cup in Tormont. And um, Trev was out half that day and we beat Nina and he got man of the match, which was, um, he gave a great kick and performance. And it was our first, it was the real one that kind of started us. That's right, we're, we're kind of in this now, we'll see how far we can go, like. To be fair to him, he still was very, you know, he was pursuing a teaching career with a real focus on becoming a teacher. And show jumping was running in parallel. Now, like the rest of us on the periphery, we could see that show jumping was going really well. And there was definitely going to a point come where they were not going to be able to be equal and that something was going to have to give. He was lucky in that a lot of the jobs he had after qualifying and teaching were of a part-time nature and he was able to work plenty in the off-season and, you know, get the time to go to shows. I suppose qualifiers happened on Wednesdays then and, you know, he was able to facilitate it all. But in 2008, he got the offer of a full-time job teaching accountancy and that had kind of forced his hand and the decision was if he wanted a show jump, you know, he had to go lock, stock and barrel into it. And, and that's the decision he made. And, and that was proven to be the right decision very quickly. 
because later that year he was national champion uh, down in Burnley down that, that August, September time. And he went on to jump in his first team in um, Ugar and Zagreb. So, like, very quickly, the decision to go show jumping full time was vindicated. To be fair, to be a good teacher, you have to be really good to plan something out. And you also have to be very reflective. And I suppose to be fair to him, he, he, he's incredible to plan out for a horse. He's meticulous in it. Cashel would be very proud of them. Like, I know Shane is doing exceptionally well for the last good few years, but for Trevor to be going as good as he's going and still to be fairly level-headed is, um, it's a great achievement. And I just, I admire what he's done. He, he backed himself and, you know, he's, he's a credit to his family um, and I wish him all the best. Congratulations to, to Shane and Trevor, but, but also to John and, and, and to all the, the Breens. Um, it's an incredible achievement. I was lucky to, to be around the lads at a time when you know, this was building. Uh, the recognition they received tonight is so justified. Um, I've learned a lot from them and continue to learn a lot from them. And that friendship that I had back then is still there. And uh, congratulations, lads. <laughs> Trevor, may I ask, how big a discovery was it for you and the fellow members of Cashel Rugby Club that to win games of a Sunday you couldn't go on the beer on a Saturday night? <laughs> there was a bit of a shock to the system at the start. No. <laughs> um, Derry O'Connor, uh, Philly mentioned him there. Um, you know, he, he revitalised the rugby club. Um, I think we were at the bottom of the third division in Munster, which is the lowest you can go. Uh, when Derry came in and uh, he changed the whole culture. Um, we had bonding sessions on a Friday night instead of Saturday. Um, so then you'd be fresh for Sunday and, uh, and it worked. And he just encouraged us, create a brilliant atmosphere, got some good players in, uh, like a few are here tonight. And uh, we had some great times and we just went, we won Division 3, then we won Division 2. And then we kind of floated in Division 1 for a bit, but then, you know, the, and then the lads kicked on and went to mm. super heights then. So you were, if you like, the, the casual version of Rog or Ron O'Gara in your day? Uh, I, uh, I'd say in my head, maybe a small bit, but uh, no. <laughs> we, had, we had good fun and uh, we used to all work hard, you know, like we had great team spirit. Uh, we all used to pull in hard and... Um, you know, that, that Philly mentioned that game in, uh, in Tom, and that was the first Munster Cup that Cashel had ever won. And uh, that, was, that, was, that was brilliant. Like, we, we enjoyed ourselves for a few days after that one. And Dermot Brislan is here tonight as well, and we're glad to see that he gave you a small little bit of a compliment there to say you weren't too bad at the teaching. <laughs> yeah, I think he's been kind at that, even, I'd say. <laughs> um, I, I definitely wasn't born to be a teacher. Um, but it was, yeah, it was just something that I suppose I, I, I was doing it to allow myself to do other things, but... Uh, it sounds it like it was the kind of culture in the Breen household. Shane mentioned earlier that, you know, try a few things and, and see what works for you, and, and you kind of continued that process. Well, to be honest, it was, it was again, credit to, to mum and dad. Uh, they were just facilitators of the, the highest order, um, and whatever we wanted to do, uh, and my sister as well, Rowena, they just fully backed us uh, in whatever way they could, um, and allowed us to to go make mistakes, uh, change course, do whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a huge testament to any parent, and it's, it's what I try to do with my kids. You, you can't tell them what to do, but just stick behind them and be there when they make mistakes to pick them up again and keep going, and that was definitely the ethos in our house. And, of course, your mum would love to be here tonight in the thick of it all. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's her 10-year anniversary um, on Wednesday, which is frightening to think it's 10 you remember years. her tonight? Yeah, we had a mass this afternoon, and... Uh, yeah, you know, she would love to be here. She'd be very, very proud. But, of course, uh, yeah. of course. So, Shane, you've been winning big, and uh, with the greatest of respect to fellow English people here tonight, you've been winning on English soil as well, which is never a bad thing if you're an Irishman. You know, the Irish always like to beat the English, don't we? <laughs> Higstead is your home now, and you, yourself and the brother have been. Doing fairly well there on the on the big days. Yeah, it's um, yeah, Hickstead is home now. And you know, when we look at some of the clips there, we see when Trevor won the Derby and uh, there was no one more delighted for him than I was. And everyone kept saying to me, He beat you to it. And I was like, 
Jeez. So then... Uh, you, you were a bit sore about that. Then. <laughs> <laughs> but then he turned around and wanted the following year again, and I thought, right, better get the socks up now. Don't but, worry. Uh, Listen, we're going to give you a little boost here now, um, Shane, because we do have one of your victories coming up first. So let's look at that first, and you can talk to us about yourself before we talk about Shane's two victories at Hickstead. So let's go with Shane's big win over there. Hit that on a lovely stride, not too far off, so he could steady him quickly before he pull up. Oh, he yes, jumped it well. Of course, just a little bit in a hurry off the end of there. I was a little bit worried he was going to end up too deep to the rails, but Shane sorted it beautifully. Just gave the horse a little pat. Yeah, so he's gone straight to the rails inside the road, getting a nice run up for the horse. Yeah, nice. And he's out over the that. Devil's Dyke. Now, don't get too excited. <laughs> He is meticulous in his planning. He can ride every stride of this course in his head before he comes in the ring. He's got the rails out of the way. Just taking just a, a moment there just to settle himself and the horse again. The horse rattled up with his belly. He did. Get up. The balustrade out of the way as well. We come back up the hill. Back round. Oh. Now he comes towards oh, the last. Shane Breen, Kenya McCann. Okay, the Al Shiradabi of 2022 gets hey. its first clear round. <laughs> Only the 65th in history. And it goes to the man from Ireland. He has planned, he has worked everything towards today. And there we have it. Wow. Well. That, that was great to see. Shane, he's been riding here for many years, but he still looks so delighted with that. How sweet was that? Sweet as a nut, Joy. <laughs> um... You had a bit to do, like that's a very demanding course, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually <clears throat> a super nice course to ride around. Um, I know they're big, big jumps, but uh, when you have a horse like Candy McCann or some of the horses I have, Golden Hawk, or it's, it's, you have time between the jumps so you can set up and you can think about your plan and your next step and your next step. Actually, I was watching that thinking, that's how I better ride him to the dike next week. <laughs> but you know we can't we can't do it without fantastic owners like Sheikh Amita who owns uh, Kenya McCann and <clears throat> you know I jumped him in the Hamburg Derby and I missed out there I was second I was double clear but got beat and people were like oh bugger but it didn't yes it was a shame not to win it I was second but all I wanted was Hickstead and then Hickstead came along and then when I won when he jumped clear for me again there, there was, like, I, I reached down and gave him a kiss because when you're trying for so long and then they finally deliver and, you know, you can, you can ride a good round and you can do all the preparation and everything, but you need a bit of luck on the day. Mm. Like, he went around the first year I did it with him. You heard him touch the... the I was just going to say that you're praying that the pole stays in the... Right. It's like a percentage thing. The first year I went six strides because he doesn't really much like the ditch in front of mm. the brown rails. And I rode him quick to it and I went six strides to the balisade and I had it down four falls. And then I came back the next year and I was clear with Golden Hawk. And then I came in with him and I knew you've got to do seven to the balisade. And I had him anchored up and I had the brown rails. So that's there, you could hear uh, Holly Smith saying that he's setting him up or giving him a breather, and all I was doing was like thinking, you gotta get this right, you're mm. going clear again. Don't let you me down get now. This right. <laughs> and like, do you get him close or whatever? And, and you know, you need a bit of luck on the day, you know? Mm. Um, but like the feeling was just amazing. And you know, the first year I ever did the Derby, um, I finished equal third with my wife, Chloe. Um, 
and you know that's that's the support when we go back to our family and that like it's you know my kids everybody were there and you know Chloe has done it and could still be doing it but you know they've she's devoted her life to the children and mm. to to my career and and you know you and well done you. <laughs> I think, Chloe, to be fair, I think after a great start by Trevor with his wife, I think Shane is catching up now at this stage. <laughs> um, He's had time to think. Oh! <laughs> um, so you've kind of repeated a similar feat, uh, Trevor. We can have a look at uh, your, one of your great days now on the big screen also. So, man who's finished second, he's finished third. Is it to be his year? Ireland's Trevor Breen has ventured to Canada. Venture Canada is very naturally fast across the ground. You see him turning up pretty tight to the gate. Too much in it at this stage. Well, he's a fraction quicker. He can still do it. Still got this to jump though. And he's done that. Now he's got a motor. Now he's going to be quick enough. Actually, he's no faster than Philip Miller. It's absolutely nip and tuck. Yeah, he's galloping now. He knows he's got to motor on. 85.19, you can see it there. You have to just get this double out of the way and try and fly to the last. There he goes. Think he's got him. Just but he's got to jump it. Pretty close. He's done it. Oh, it's close! Oh, yes. look at that! Two hundreds! <laughs> oh, my word! That's what it comes down to after all the drama of the afternoon. The first win for Trevor Breen for Ireland by just two hundredths of a second from last year's winner. What a story! For those watching around the world, we have an expression in Ireland called a hair's breadth. And I think that would be the difference in that case. Trevor, would you agree? Oh, God, yeah. That was... That was uh, Could you I, believe it? I thought I'd done enough. I didn't think I'd left it that tight, to be honest. That wasn't the plan. But uh, it, the, it was a jump off with Philip Miller, who had won it the previous year. And I was second to him. And... To be honest, the, the horse, I must mention, is a cashel horse as well, essentially, because uh, Keith Bar uh, Karen Swan, who lives li uh, next door to me wow. at the Duella Road, owns him. She's English originally, but moved over here and is now married to Keith Barry. So they live in Lime Tree Grove next door. Wow. Um, so it's another connection to Tipperary. Brilliant. But, um, he, he jumped his best round probably the year before. And then, so I'm in the jump off with him. Philip went ahead of me, and he had won down. And I'll never forget coming to that hedge that he knocked. And I saw the distance ages away, and I thought, oh, perfect. That's a nice quick one. And that's, that's probably the easiest fence in the jump off. And then when he knocked it, my heart literally oh, just no. dropped. You've got to uh, keep your composure. Well, that's it. The game wasn't over, but I had the dike to jump the next fence. And I thought, and that is the hardest fence to jump. It looks like track. a crazy yeah, challenge. Well, you jump down into it. And, and then and if, you, if you get your timing wrong, it could all go horribly wrong. Oh, yeah. like that, you know, It could have been ball burst game over after that. I would have just literally done a circle and walked out the gate. It's right at the gate. So I just thought, I can still, like, it's, in, it's so fresh in my head still. I just went, right. Get this jumped and then just set off like a scalded cat home. And, uh, and that's what I did. And I was very quick to the water around. And then I thought by that last double, I, I genuinely thought I'd enough done. Like, and, uh, and then when I looked up. Well, you had a course. Just about now. <laughs> it, was, it was too close for comfort. But the, the funny thing was he won that by 0 0.02. 
And a month later, he won the same horse. Uh, we won the Queen's Cup at the, the Nations Cup show in Hickstead, and he won that by 0 0.05. So he won two huge championships by 0 0.07 in total. The locals must be fair sicky, you <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Well, yeah, wish you luck. We have to take it when you can get it, isn't it? Incredible performances, though. Yeah, uh, I mean, that, that was probably more relief when I won that, to be honest, mm -hmm. because the year before was the year my mum passed away, or our mum passed away, and... Uh, she I was, was looking down on you there. Yeah, uh, but the year before, I was genuinely, I, w I was probably favourite even more so than that year to win it, and um, he jumped the best round, he just touched that dry ditch that Shane talked about there earlier, and I literally, it was... Uh, like it was the worst second place I've ever had. I couldn't believe it. And uh, and then he was 14 this year. I came back. I still had a chance, obviously, but not as strong a chance. Uh, and then I thought, if he doesn't win it this year, I didn't want the horse. He's, he was an unbelievable horse for me, and I didn't want him to become the best horse to not win the Derby. You know. Mm. Um, so I wanted it for him as much as everything. And uh, so to win it, honestly, it was just, I was just relieved. I was like, thank God I've done that now mm. at this stage. And then, and then the following year, actually, I came back uh, with him again, but obviously he was 15, a bit older. But I had another horse, Loch Ness, the WB, which had won it in 2012 with uh, another Munster man, Waterford man called Paul Beecher. And uh, I, I took the ride on him then. And, um, and the next year, just like the monkey was off my back nearly, and I went in with him and I just hacked around clear. Put to like, the floor. And, and, and I won it the following year again on, mm. on Loch Ness Juice of WB. So it's like, it's like everything, you know, when you, you know, the kind of when you burst the dam then and it just Brilliant. came one after the other. Oh, and of course, you have a good associate beside you who can probably give you good advice to sharpen up, as the fellow says. Yeah, at, at, at the start, you know, Shane was a good help. And, and, you know, growing up, Shane was my mentor. You know, he was my coach or whatever, probably... Yeah when I went to England. Yeah. <laughs> one, of the, one of the first Grand Prix horses, the owner is here tonight, Jim yeah. Costigan. Colin Hill always was... And it was brilliant to meet Jim um, when I met him at the door. I haven't met Jim in a good while. Mm. Uh, and Jim was, uh, like I say, he was a, an owner for Shane. And when Shane left, Jim was very... He took a big punt on me um, to give me the horse. It was a very good horse and uh, called always Colin Hill. And Jim Costigan was, you know, I'm hugely indebted to Jim to take that punt. And I said to him earlier, like, there's no way I'd be sitting here talking to you without him taking that punt. So I was delighted that he could make it and, and have that uh, belief. We're joined on stage now by the Chief Executive of Tipperary County Council, Joe McGrath. Uh, Joe, nights like tonight, important to celebrate our own, I think you'll agree. Very important, uh, Paul, uh, uh, an absolutely beautiful evening here and, and indeed I think we're all honoured to be here uh, to recognise this and indeed to acknowledge, I think it's been mentioned that that we give civic receptions that are given by the elected members of Tipperary County Council as a way of doing, I think, three things. First of all, recognition. And I think it's important to recognise when, when our own go out and the national and international stage and perform to such a level as Trevor and Shane have. I suppose acknowledgement and acknowledgement from your own people in your own county, your own town, your own location to say, look, there, 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 are, there are lads, they've gone out, they've done great things and an appreciation. And what's happening tonight is, the, is that the elected members, the 40 elected members at the instigation of our car here, look, Councillor Roger Kennedy, are saying thank you. Uh, they're saying thank you very much indeed for everything that you've done, obviously for your own sport, which is important to yourselves, the extraordinary cohesiveness of this board, I think, comes across this evening, and the family element of it are very, very strong. But also, thank you for going out and representing our county in such a glorious fashion as you continued to do, and hopefully will continue to do, no doubt, in the future. <laughs> Tipperary's connection with the horse is incredible. Joe, yeah, it? it's very strong. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the, you know, tonight is the 17th, since Tipperary County Council was formed back in 2014, tonight is the 17th um, civic reception. Um, and if you look at the breakdown of those over the years, 12 of those have been related to sport, achie achievement of excellence in sport. Now, you wouldn't be surprised to see perhaps our national sports being recognised quite, you know, hurling and football uh, as we've had in the past, but four of them have been in the broader equine area 
which is very, very interesting. Most Morris in 2016, uh, we had Aidan and Joseph O'Brien in 2018, Rachel Blackmore during the middle of lockdown, Paul, you might remember when there was only four or five yes, in, yes. In, in the chamber at that time and, and a few cameras in 2021, and tonight, uh, Trevor and Shane. So I think it's very, very important. It sends out a very strong message, not just in terms of sport and sporting achievement and sporting attainment, but the, the broader equine sport in the county is alive and well, and the heritage with which Tipperary associates so strongly and has done so for many, many years is also alive and well. And the the horse is such a beautiful animal. Uh, those that are into horses and racing or show jumping or whatever it is, leads to huge international connections also, doesn't it? It does. I mean, for example, we, we, just by, by way of example, one of the initiatives we're working on, Tipperary County Council, we're working with our colleagues in Kildare County Council, also very strong traditions in, 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 house, in horsing, in, um, in, in horse breeding, I should say, in Kildare, with Horse Race in Ireland, with Fault Ireland and others, to try, if you like, not just tell the story of equine, the equine story of Tipperary, but to use it as an opportunity to attract people into the county, if you like, and to create, if you like, an economic activity around that. And that's, that's happening as, as we speak. And we're building on those. We've, we've signed the Cahirux signed a friendship agreement with Maryland, for example, also around that. So we're using, I suppose, every opportunity. And when you go out and do what you achieve and what you have done, it makes our job so much easier. And that's. I'd like to also say in addition to thank you, a personal thank you for, for that as well. Brilliant. Uh, and guys, it's an individual sport to an extent, even though there's a big team behind you, but team, of course, comes into it as well when you're representing Ireland. I mean, it must be a great thrill to represent Ireland, Trevor. Yeah, uh, Team Ireland is, you know, it's a huge honour to put on the green jacket um, and uh, at, at any stage or any venue, but, uh, you know, to put it on beside my brother Shane as well, which we've done and quite a few occasions now, um, it's even a bit more special. Um, so, you know, there's, there's nothing like representing your country um, mm. and it's something I always strive to do and, and will always strive to do and when I can, I always will. Well, we want to talk to the pair of you about a big success you had in the Middle East, which we're going to just reflect on now. No matter what you, you win as an individual, uh, to win on, on to be on a winning team is is is, is a lot of pressure, um, and uh, it takes a special rider to be able to deliver consistently. Um, I always was rather wary of riders who didn't want to come to the team because I felt that maybe they felt that that pressure was a little bit uh, something that they didn't quite like. The Breen certainly like it. Well, when we won the Nations Cup in Abu Dhabi, obviously I suppose we would have been warm favourites, but we'd have been warm favourites on many occasions and come up second, you know, things had went against us on many occasions. But this time, you know, we were, we were just better than everybody else. It was a competitive cup. There was Shane and Trevor and David Simpson, who was, you know, who trained a little with the, with the Breen brothers, in, uh, especially Shane in Hickstead. Three of them came out of Shane's yard, and then Trevor obviously is only down the road, and it's, I suppose it's a bit phenomenal when you see that four people line out that could conceivably come in the one truck and win a Five Star Nations Cup. Spot on over the double, two to go for Shane Breen for Ireland, the current leaders, just the one. No problem with the clock, and no problem with the Lodgy Boxer. That was a superb clear from Shane Breen. A great rider, simply goes in the ring to win, but these guys would, would have done it all from the very ground up, brought their horses through the different phases and, and brought them to the highest level. Um, and they didn't just depend on going out and getting a, a top horse or perhaps buying a, bot a top horse, they made them as well into top horses. Great horsemen. They have been looking very dangerous, the Irish, over the last three days. And this is looking extremely good for Trevor Breen as well. And that is clear number three for Ireland. It's a quick time as well. But Ireland will go in to round two on zero penalties. No other team will be able to match that now. Team Ireland, victorious in the Abu Dhabi leg of the Longin FBI Nations Cup. As they take to the stadium, Michael Blake, the team manager, Shane Breen, 20-year-old Jack Ryan, David Simpson and Trevor Breen.
we're very lucky that we are qualified for the Olympics. We qualified at the first attempt, which I think is the first time an Irish team ever did. Incidentally, we were the first team in any sport, Irish, to qualify for the Paris Olympics. So we're, we're quite proud of that. Like, everybody needs to be the best they can be. The Olympics is big stuff. The team gets picked in late June of 2024, which is 13 months away, and so much can happen in 13 months. I mean, we have a, a number of riders that are capable of riding the Olympics, but just depends. We can only bring three and an alternative, so it just depends who's got the best horses in form at the time. And I suppose my message to everyone is, try and be on the best horse you can. Because you couldn't, no matter what horses you have, you could have better ones. And it's really, really important because, you know, you can't win without the horse. In Rio when I was there, Nick Skelton won an individual gold with Big Star. And uh, he was in his 60s at the time, so... Um, I think this, this job definitely is something that the older you get, definitely the steadier you get, which helps for show jumping. And you, you build up more contacts, which helps you to put yourself in better circles and access to better horses. I was lucky enough to go to Rio and Shane actually came as my trainer to Rio to help me as well in 2016. I had a fantastic horse then. There would be loads of stories I could tell you, but it would be better if there wasn't a camera turned on in front of me now. But uh, yeah, sure, as I say, sure, we've, we've, been, we've been friends in competition and friends uh, <coughs> out of competition for years. And sure, the lads are great old crack and they're known for it. But at the same time, when you have to roll up the sleeves and do your job, there's no better man to be serious and get stuck in. So. I'm just delighted that they're being recognised and the two lads and the whole family, they've been, they've been great and a great support, a support to me to, get, to help me get to a high level and a big support to many other young riders, so hats off to you lads. I, I personally would like to extend a great word of gratitude to those guys for doing what they're doing on the world stage, um, week in, week out, um, and, 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 and supporting our industry. So, again, another Irish expression we have for the benefit of our international viewers, folks, is self-praise is no praise, but huge amounts of praise for your work here tonight, folks, and I hope you get some sense of how proud we are of your achievements and your connection to Tipperary. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And the Cahirlock has returned to uh, conclude our formal element of the evening. Over to you, Cahirlock. Roger Kennedy. You can stay sitting, Roger. Thank Otherwise, you. we'll only be looking at the frame, but uh, I'd okay. like to keep you on. on. Uh, there's a scroll being presented to each of the two buys, and I'll read the scroll. To Brary County Council, Corlea Conde Hibbardown, Civic Reception, be it known that the Cahirlock Council, Roger Kennedy, and members of Tipperary County Council, acting on behalf of the people of Tipperary, and in exercise of its power under Section 74 of the Local Government Act 2001, resolved at its meeting on Monday, the 8th of May 2023, to confer a civic honour to, this one is Trevor Breen, in recognition of his contribution to horse jumping at national and international level, representing Ireland and Nations Cup teams, and in particular, his phenomenal collection of wins uh, on Eddie winning the British Speed Derby 2009, the Eventing Grand Prix 2012, the All England Grand Prix 2012, the Queen Elizabeth JJ Cup, and the infamous Hickstead Derby 2014, and in so doing, bringing honour to the County of Tipperary, signed Roger Kennedy, Cahirlock, and Joe McGrath, Pre Vimanoch, uh, 12th of June 2023, and we have a scroll for each of the two buys. And you also. You also have another special gift, Colin we, we have. We have um, a Helen Costello ceramic for each of the two buys with an inscription on the front of it. And <coughs> they're pretty heavy. Very beautiful. Th these are handcrafted, specially made, uh, made from clay. Uh, Civic Reception, 12th of June, 2023. This horse is called the Sentry, presented to Trevor Breen by Councillor Roger Kennedy, Cahill of Tipperary County Council, in recognition of his contribution to show jumping at national and international level and representing Ireland worldwide on the Nation Cup, Nation Cup team. And there's one over on the other side for Shane. So you can guess by the way to it. But the <coughs> person, Helen Costello, who made these, 
uh, she wrote a personal note to Shane and Trevor. Uh, some of it is the same on both and then it's a little bit different on the end. I am thrilled that you are the recipient of one of my creations. Congratulations. I am delighted to get the opportunity to share our mutual passion, respect and awareness of these magnificent creatures. After a lifetime spent in agriculture and horses, I have found my new passion in telling stories through the medium of clay. It is the spirit of the horse, its essential nature, that has the power to move me. There is the same... Thing, there is something in a horse's eye, the set of its head, its alertness, even when relaxed, that, that catches my attention. The physical presence of horses is extremely impressive. Their muscular strength, flowing manes and tails, and finely tuned bodies cannot fail to impact us. In majesty, I hope to capture the combination of power, beauty, and in her amiable nature and her amiable nature of the horse. I hope that you will enjoy this sculpture as much as I enjoyed making it, wishing you many years of health and happiness and continued success. And the final piece, and the one for Trevor, the posture of the horse reflects its state of mind. The slightest movement of an ear is enough to allow other horses to read and understand the signal. In the century, I hope to capture the horse's state of attentiveness of sounds from different directions, her face suggesting she is undecided about her next move. I hope you will enjoy the sculpture as much as I've enjoyed making it. And um, Helen is an artist in Clock Jordan in uh, County Tipperary. So we're delighted to be able to present these two to the boys. We did it earlier on with photographs. So rather than hold everybody up now, but tonight is a special night for these two lads. And I was lucky enough to see Tommy Wade in the Aga Can jumping in 1963. You told me he got you into a bit of bother as well. Or you I got did, into I did. I was below in the Gwaeltucht in Kool-Aid, supposed to be speaking Irish all the time. And the local shop was the only place there was a television on. And I was watching the Aga Can uh, from the RDS. And um, it was in English. And the teacher came in and started giving out to me. But uh, I, when I explained to him in Irish that a course in, by uh, me, uh, Tommy Wade, August Dundrum, my Bala, uh, August. We need a translator there I, for our English yeah, friends. I, I've forgotten some of the words, but I got through it in. And um, uh, there was a great reception, but in 67, I was there for the reception in Dundrum when Tommy Wade and Dundrum came back to, to Dundrum after winning the Aga Khan again for the second time. So that's in my memory. And I, I lead on then to so many, like these boys, they were always, we were always following, following your story, the same as ever. And we're now following Tom and Max Watchman and their story. And it goes on and on with so many others that, that my fellow councillors named there during their presentation of so many terrific horse people. And we are delighted as a county council to be here tonight to honour the whole show jumping industry. And as the uh, chief executive said, we, I was lucky enough to sign a memorandum of understanding with Maryland for dealing to and fro uh, in the, they're particularly in the show jumping, but in the general horse and to the show jumping there, Maryland are most interested in. So this is to the benefit of the economy of Tipperary and we're delighted to recognize it here tonight. Well done. Well done. So, I have, I have two quick questions for Trevor and Shane before we wind up proceedings tonight, folks. We have um, the shift to keep of Team Ireland in the house tonight, and Michael Blake, and thank you again, Michael, for your time in compiling our tribute to the guys here tonight. I don't know if your presence here is an indication that the boys are straight onto the team for Paris <laughs> next year. Um, but the Olympics are looming, folks. Trevor, you'd love to be in on rank, as Roger might say, which is the Irish for France next year. Uh, you'd love to be there with your brother. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, there's a lot of other guys with the same ideas. Um, but as Michael said in his clip, uh, you know, all we can do is um, put our best foot forward, uh, have our horses in good sound nick, um, make a plan towards that, um, and then, you know, put ourselves in the, in the frame for Michael to pick us. Um, we need to be jumping clear rounds. Um, we need to be winning Nations Cups. And, uh, and I'm sure if we are, you know, Michael is, is he's, he's a brilliant leader and he makes decisions, he makes tough decisions. So um, 
and uh, he's he's spoiled for choice at the moment with the amount of Irish riders in the, uh, that are doing so well all over the the world. Um, so I think we have a really strong team, and um, but yeah, what we can do is our best, and uh, you know it's up to him then at the end uh, uh, if we, we we put ourselves in that position that hopefully he picks us. We're after getting a fair few life lessons here from whether it was Tommy Wade or. Derry from Cashel Rugby telling us not to be drinking the night before a big game. <laughs> um, Shane, have you any advice for the girl or boy watching this and listening to the two V, which are exploits in Higstead and on the international stage, who might want to go down that road? What's your advice for maybe the next generation, Shane? Uh, my, my advice is follow your heart, follow your dreams, and be absolutely focused, hardworking, and believe in yourself and, and believe whatever, whatever goal you want to achieve, just believe that you can achieve it. Work hard and it will happen. Um, you know, the Irish show jumping team at the moment is unbelievably strong. Um, there's great owners, uh, great horses and great riders. Um, uh, so many, like Michael Blake has a hard job at the minute. Um, so when we look to Paris and all of that, it's my dream to jump in Olympics. I've jumped to Worlds and the Europeans, and you know we've won. We've had a, I've had a great, great career, and but it would be lovely to win a medal at the Olympics. So for me, I have to focus on my performances. I have to perform. Uh, I have to get a horse that I believe is good enough to represent all of us at the Olympics and to help Team Ireland to win a medal. Um, and when we look at, as we've spoken earlier, about the Watchmans, I jumped on a team last week, they're only 18 and 19, and such talent. And, you know, it's, I feel like when we're on a team now with Dennis Lynch and myself and that, we feel actually quite old now, we're not even 50 yet. <laughs> but, but you can keep <coughs> going till you're 60 by the sounds of Greg Broderick there. Well, Tommy Wade said to me, keep going till you're 60, and if you're still at it after that, you're as mad as John Whittaker. <laughs> <laughs> but... You know, th like, keep going as long as you can. Once you're fit and healthy, why not keep doing it? And if you have a good enough horse and, and you're enjoying it, why not keep going? But, you know, I have four kids now as well, and, and they love the horses, and, you know, we have to look at their career as well and think about, you know, trying to help them. And it's, you know, it's so many, so many things. It's the animal, it's the, uh, it's, it's a huge. The bond, it's a, even. It, it's yeah, a huge bond, thing, yeah. and, and you know, team jumping, for me, it gives me goosebumps. It's a different feeling going into the, okay, when you walk in the gate, that's it, you feel nothing. Mm. Only you have your plan and that's it, you try mm. and execute it. But the build up and everything gives, it's not fear or anything, it's not nerves, but it's, it's that tension that gives you goosebumps mm. that you absolutely Pride. Pride love in your it. country. You yeah. absolutely love it, and you know, there's no, there's no I in team. And, and you know everyone's behind you. It doesn't matter whether you're in Abu Dhabi or whether it, okay, Dublin's a bit more special, but mm. it's, the feeling is incredible. And, you know, if we could bring home medals, like, you know, every, the, whole, the whole country appreciates mm. success. But it's, it's also a very individualistic sport uh, most of the time. Um, and from me, with my background with like rugby and other sports, like I, I love the team environment mm. and the, 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 you know, the team ethos. So to jump on Team Ireland is you, you get a little taste of that that we don't normally get in show mm. jumping. So like I, I love it. I, I thrive on it, and um, you know I always try and be a kind of vibrant part of the team and get a good atmosphere going and get stuck in. Well, look, we've, we're we're just about to wind up proceedings here tonight, but before we do, um, give yourself and Shane the opportunity to say a few words. Leave the last word with you before we pull the curtains down on the stage. If you'd like to say anything in particular. Um, I'd, like, I'd like to, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no fighting, age, no lads. Age before beauty. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I would like to, like even going back the whole, like Tipperary, for me, you know, as a kid, I hunted with the Tipperary foxhounds and uh, with the scar teens. And like the people as a kid who all my life have inspired me, I've ridden beside them. Like when you look at, you know, as I said, when I saw Eddie Mack and jump a clear round, I thought, right, that's what I have to do. And, you know, as a kid hunting, I hunted with Timmy Hyde and Mouse Morris and Tom Marr and my father, and they were mad, I thought. Like, they just went. And, and you know, now, then after, like, I had the honour of hunting with Chris Ryan, which I thought was incredible. And, and, and then I hunt, hunt with his son, 
um, or Teddy Ryan, I mean, and now I hunt his son, uh, Chris Ryan, and like these people to cross country are just incredible. And it's, it's an art. And it's, it's, that's again what gives me the bug and, you know, for the people at Tipperary to allow us cross their country. And it's, it's a dream. It's, it's, uh, it's, the horses love it. It's uh, something I love and it's uh, what I grew up with. And, and it was kind of my foot to show jumping. And I suppose that's what helps me win a few derbies. So I'd very much like to thank the Tipperary Council. I'd like to thank the people of Tipperary and especially everybody in Ireland. And thank you for your support. And we'll keep trying to do the best we can. So, Trevor, follow that. <laughs> he, can, he can't be quiet, can he? <laughs> um, no, it was, he, I'd just like to echo what, what, what Shane has said. Um, just uh, thank you again to, to Roger and the Tipperary Council. It was a, a real shock, but a real honour to, to get this award. And uh, that there are people out there that think we're doing a good job. It, it's, you know, it's, it's hugely humbling uh, to get that honour bestowed on us. And uh, we really appreciate it. And thank you. And, and as well, like, uh, unbelievable thanks to all you guys for coming out tonight. Um, it's a, I know it's a big effort. It's a Monday night. And uh, to see this place packed is an incredible honour. And again, hugely humbling. And uh, really, thank you very much. And thanks to you as well, Paul. No problem. Great. great seeing you guys. Thank okay, you, folks. So that just about wraps things up for tonight, folks. Uh, thank you so much for being a great audience. Thanks to Shane and Trevor uh, for everything they've uh, done to date. And we'll be rooting for you guys until you're 60 and beyond. And uh, for Roger, did you want to say something before we? Oh, it was a pleasure to have you here tonight, to listen to your story, to listen to the, the reality of what you lived through day after day, and to be such an example to the youth coming forward. And this will be on YouTube to, for anybody at home. The youngsters will be able to play it. They'll be able to look in on it. They'll be able to look at it. And they'll be able to, as, as all the other ones that Joe mentioned there over the last couple of years are on YouTube. Thanks to yourself, Paul, and the team. And it was a pleasure to honour you tonight. And I think we made a very wise choice. So to you watching on the internet, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. And until the next time, Slonga Foyle.